In the past, the story of human evolution was one of a lonely, slow-moving transition from one species to another. We now know that the story is untrue. Traces of mysterious ancient humans have been discovered in our genomes. Ancient humans were sexual explorers, mating with Neanderthals and Denisovans, but recent DNA findings suggest dalliances with African groups previously unknown. We learn about our forefathers in a variety of ways. The bones reveal what they looked like. Their diet is revealed by their teeth. Tools, pots, art, and other artifacts tell the story of their society. The first ancient genome was sequenced a decade ago, revealing a whole new window on our past, one that promised more intimate insights. The discovery famously proved that Neanderthals became very friendly with humans. Since then, geneticists have been searching for evidence of past interspecies interactions in a growing number of fossils. The research has not disappointed. In an exciting twist, they have begun to stir up something unexpected, traces of relatives we never knew existed concealed inside genomes. They are referred to as ghosts by geneticists. We have no tangible evidence of these ancient hominins, no bones, tools, or archaeological artifacts. Yet, the genetic code they left in the bones of other hominins, as well as in current humans, is providing deep and unprecedented insights into how our species evolved and what the world was like at the time. These research demonstrated that early humans mated with Neanderthals more than once. According to current estimates, everyone except Africans' genomes are between 2 and 4% Neanderthal. There were two distinctly distinct species here separated by up to 700,000 years of evolution, but the traces of their sexual inclinations are still there in the DNA of the vast majority of humans alive now. Furthermore, it soon became clear that our forefathers were not exclusively having affairs with Neanderthals. Once upon a time, the hypothesis that our ancestors hybridized with other hominins was disregarded. It was beginning to appear that they would mate with anything remotely human. Many attempts have been made in recent years to enhance these methodologies and apply them to Africa, the believed birthplace of our species and the backdrop for a period of our history about which we know very little. This new study has discovered at least one ancient ghost on the continent, known as the African Neanderthals. Geneticists have spent years sequencing and analyzing the genomes of current Africans who descend from ancient populations such as the Barker hunter-gatherers of Cameroon and the Hadza and Sandor of Tanzania. They discovered sections of DNA that appeared to be from another hominin species within these genomes. Because this DNA is only discovered in African descendants and not in Eurasians, the ghost species must have interbred with Homo sapiens after 60,000 years ago. According to the team's calculations, this occurred during the last 30,000 years. If true, this is enormous. It means that until very recently, at least one other species of hominid coexisted with us in Africa. Furthermore, information that will be revealed soon implies that there may have been more than one ghost. African ghosts appear to be evolutionary separate from modern humans in the same way that Neanderthals and Denisovans are. That suggests they descended from the same African group from whom European Neanderthals descended. Thus the theory is that 700,000 years ago, a population separated from the modern human lineage and became what we now call European Neanderthals. At the same time, another split occurs, resulting in an African Neanderthal. It's unclear who these African Neanderthals were. Because no ancient African hominin's genome has yet been sequenced, it's feasible that physical vestiges of this ghost have already been discovered. My guess is that the introgressor is Homo rhodesiensis. Unpublished data implies that this ghost species existed fewer than 300,000 years ago, when modern humans first appeared. Homo rhodesiensis, popularly known as a Rhodesian man, was an extinct hominid species that lived in Africa between 500,000 and 125,000 years ago. The type specimen of this species is a fossil carboy skull discovered in Broken Hill, northern Rhodesia, now Zambia, in 1921. When the Broken Hill skull was unearthed, it was instantly realized that it did not belong to a modern human, but to an old one. Indeed, Homo rhodesiensis was a robust species with big brow ridges and a broad face. 
It is also known as the African Neanderthal, despite the fact that it has characteristics with both Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, as well as a close relationship with Homo heidelbergensis. It has been proposed that Homo sapiens adultu, sometimes known as Herto man, was the ancestor of Homo sapiens sapiens. The African Neanderthal, originally dubbed Homo rhodesiensis, has since been classified as one of the best preserved specimens of another ancient human species in Africa. They are thought to have first arisen 600,000 years ago and expanded throughout much of Africa, leaving a sprinkling of fossils and lots of stone tools in their wake. The Broken Hill fossil has been difficult to date because the site where it was discovered has since been destroyed. Nonetheless, it was long assumed to be around 500,000 years old, which fits in perfectly with the other dates known for the species. However, after years of research, including direct dating of the skull and other human and non-human elements discovered around the Broken Hill site, scientists have determined that the Broken Hill skull is approximately 299,000 years old. This is remarkably young, considering that until recently, it was considered that the African continent was home to only one type of hominid, Homo sapiens. This new study reveals that the picture was far more complicated than this. We already knew that roughly 300,000 years ago, Eurasia was home to a varied range of human lineages. The same holds true for Africa, as this African Neanderthal must have lived alongside more sapiens-like fossils in Morocco and Kenya. A date of around 300,000 years ago demonstrates the complexities of human evolution in Africa. It appears that Africa and Eurasia were home to a diverse spectrum of hominid species only a few hundred thousand years ago. The globe appears to have been a busy place, and we're just now beginning to appreciate what this may signify for our own origins. The new age of the fossil alters our understanding of what happened on the African continent, not only when the African Neanderthal was living and dispersing over the continent, but also when our own species, Homo sapiens, was evolving before venturing into the rest of the world. Conversely, the African ghosts could have been a Homo sapiens subpopulation that was separated from other populations for long enough that, its members' DNA acquired different markers, such as the Jebel Erhoud specimen from Morocco. In fact, scientists initially thought the skull belonged to some strange African Neanderthal. The fossil skull of Jebel Erhoud was discovered in Morocco in the 1960s. Initially, the skull was supposed to be that of a 40,000-year-old African Neanderthal. As anthropologists examined it, they recognized a sapiens-looking face, although a rudimentary one, rather than a Neanderthal. Jebel Erhoud had a blend of modern-looking characteristics such as their facial construction. The face is essentially that of someone you may meet on the street nowadays. And rudimentary characteristics such as the form of the brain case. The mix of features didn't seem to fit into the time frame. People came up with all kinds of crazy theories about them, such as that they were some type of African Neanderthals or outbreeds of Neanderthals and modern humans, while the rest of Africa already had humans that were quite near to us. The human fossils were discovered in Morocco's Jebel Erhoud, together with stone tools classified as Mousterian, a term used to designate objects associated with European Neanderthal sites. Given the common assumption at the time that modern humans had developed from Neanderthal predecessors, these fossils were labeled African Neanderthals. The size and shape of the fossils revealed that one skull had a face structure that differed significantly from that of Neanderthals, and was more closely related to that of Homo sapiens. Yet, because it was supposed to be a juvenile fossil, it was not considered a possible ancestor of later Homo sapiens. Neanderthals and most other prehistoric humans had distinct facial features that distinguished them from the Jebel Erhoud specimens, which were most comparable to modern Homo sapiens. While significantly larger, the lower jaw fossil from Jebel Erhoud has the most form similarities to the jaw of modern Homo sapiens. The Jebel Erhoud sample, on the other hand, showed some structural variation, particularly in brow ridge size, which could be related to within-species sex variations. As compared to Homo sapiens brain cases from the last 130,000 years, the Jebel Erhoud brain cases retained several archaic traits, such as an elongated shape and low height. Their exterior brain case shape was intermediate between archaic and more modern-looking fossils, 
but most resembled the late archaic Homo sapiens skull from Litoli in Tanzania, and the early modern Homo sapiens skulls from Kafzeh in Israel. The form of their inside brain case was distinct. Possibly it indicates a structure around the beginning of the pathway that led to the evolution of Homo sapiens globular brain shape, over the last 130,000 years. Anthropologists believe that the Jebel Erhoud fossils could help us comprehend Homo sapiens evolution throughout Africa. The face structure of two skulls resembles that of Homo sapiens today, and they draw parallels with the approximately 260,000-year-old Floresbad fossil from South Africa, which is frequently assigned to early Homo sapiens. Nonetheless, it appears increasingly likely that modern humans' delicate faces are inherited from non-sapiens ancestors in our family tree. If this is the case, the parallels between the Erhoud and Floresbad fossils could be interpreted as parallel retentions of fundamental ancestral traits rather than evidence of kinfolk across Africa. We now lack data on human links throughout the Sahara, and it is unknown how isolated the Jebel Erhoud community would have been. The anthropologists believe that the globular brain structure of contemporary humans emerged very recently, making it a potential defining feature of human civilization. Given the possibility that both brain size and shape evolved separately, and in parallel along the Neanderthal and Homo sapiens lineages spanning at least 400,000 years, cognitive differences between the two species may have developed over that time. To be honest, it would be astonishing if our forefathers did not interbreed with other ancient hominins in Africa. Yet, the evidence for African ghosts remains speculative, because we know so little about Africa's demographic history. Scientists have to make numerous assumptions in order to interpret their data. It is not to say that hybridization did not occur in Africa, it most likely did. It's just extremely difficult to demonstrate. The deciding factor will be the ability to sequence DNA retrieved from an African fossil, and compare it to pieces of ghost DNA identified in present Africans. That is a hurdle, but given the breakthroughs in ancient DNA sequencing over the last decade, it is likely that someone will meet it soon. There could have been a few hominin species living with us in Africa recently. Genetics in general is altering our understanding of our species. All of these findings show that it was the norm, not the exception, for hominin groups to divide for thousands or perhaps hundreds of thousands of years before reuniting and mating. Evolutionary trees with neat bifurcations must be abandoned. Take a pen and start drawing squiggly lines on a piece of paper, that is human history. On a more basic level, it is forcing many researchers to abandon the word species and subspecies when referring to various hominins, instead referring to groupings or populations. Individuals from other species, such as Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, aren't supposed to be able to have viable offspring. Genetic ghosts and near ghosts are making the ancient world less lonely. In reality, Africa is gradually but steadily splitting. Like with anything in geology, it will take millions of years, but eventually, a piece of East Africa will detach from the rest of the continent, culminating in the formation of a new ocean between the two land masses. The African plate is splitting into two plates, the smaller Somalian plate and the larger Nubian plate, which are migrating apart at a millimeter each year. Yet, in another five million years, these changes could result in a totally different Earth. Around this time, a new ocean will most likely arise between the Somalian and Nubian plates. Africa's vast continent would lose its eastern shoulder, and East Africa will be cut off by a large sea. 